Hello everyone, my name is Dean Glover, SE over here at Talus Group. Today I'm going to be presenting a demo of our tokenization product, CypherTrust Tokenization, aka Vaultless Tokenization, for the MySQL database backend. This product works at the application level using RESTful API calls. So it will work with any backend database essentially, since the sensitive data is protected via the tokenization directly at the application layer before it is stored in the database. This is my contact information, dean.glover at talisgroup.com. If you have any questions on this presentation, I will be happy to help you or answer those questions for you. So moving on, let's go talk about some terms. So tokenization is used in different contexts, such as access tokens and other types of authentication. And that is not what we're referring to here. We're referring to a process of exchanging sensitive data with non-sensitive representation of the data called the token. A subset of that is the format preserved encryption type of tokenization. It is essentially a form of tokenization, but instead of creating a random or fixed length data element type, this process maintains both the length and data type of the sensitive data. This process allows for the possibility to tokenize part of a string, but leave another part of the string in the clear and stored in the database in that format. Next is a quick example of format preserved encryption with a credit card. So this is the credit card number that was input into the CypherTrust tokenization process, and the output is the actual tokenized value. As you can tell, the format remained the same, so all digits and four characters split up into four, I'm sorry, four, four digits each. And this is how it would be stored in, in a database in this example. So some of the use cases are reduced PCI scope and support other compliance initiatives. It's less intrusive than straight encryption using AES 256-bit strings, since that would not be maintained in the format of a credit card, for example, would be much longer and a different type of data element. De-identified data in development test cloud and big data environments. Prevent admin attackers and unauthorized users from looking at the sensitive data. So one of the challenges companies have is that well, if the data is stored in the clear in a database or if the DBA has access to the encryption key, then they would be able to, the DBA would be able to see the sensitive data detokenized or decrypted, whichever one was stored. Well, if you store the data in a tokenized format and the DBA is not granted specific access to it, they will not be able to see the tokenized value. They will, they, I'm sorry, they will not be able to see the detokenized value. They will only see the tokenized value. So capability summary, high performance faultless tokenization via RESTful APIs, format preserving or random tokenization, single, irreversible, and multi-use, tokenization of numeric, alphanumeric, and date data, supports multi-byte tokenization character sets, optional LUN checks for credit card tokenization, so LUN checks are really good to validate the credit cards. Not so good in the testing, testing environment where you don't want to use actual credit card numbers, but this is optional. It's just a checkbox. It's very easy to enable or disable. Dynamic data masking based on user or group. Also offers application layer encryption APIs and libraries, which really helps to integrate custom applications with this product since you have more controls over it using these APIs and libraries. Virtual appliance-based architecture enables elastic scaling. So the demo, I'm going to go through two basic demos today. The first one is a generic credit card example. I'm going to log on as these three different users and they each have different access. The second demo I'm going to be doing is the generic banking application using these three users. With that, let's jump into the demo. All right, so here we are. This is our Acme demo, just the basic credit card information. So we have the credit card, we have my email address or an email address, the expiration date, expiration date and the CVV. So let's click create and see what happens. So this is the actual data that was input on that screen, previous, previous screen. This is the actual API calls that are being made to the to the tokenization server 
And here's the actual tokenized values that store it in the database. As you can tell, everything before the at sign was actually tokenized using alphanumeric, but the after the at sign was not tokenized, it was left in the clear. Similarly, the credit card number, the first 12 were kept or tokenized and the last four were in the clear. And then the CVV was actually just tokenized. It was four, five, six, but it's now one, six, nine. All right, how does this impact the users? So let's see, let's log in as customer server one. And let's see what they are looking at. So when they log in, they see the last four of the actual email address before the at sign, and they see the last four of the credit card in the clear. However, the CVV is still tokenized. In fact, it should never be detokenized because uh, it would be a PCI violation. Essentially, it shouldn't be stored even. But however, there are use cases where you might need, may need to do that. All right, so that's user one. Let's look at customer serve two. See what I'm doing here. Two. All right, this is customer service two. As you can tell, this, this person was granted access to nothing, essentially. Everything was just masked. So anything that was tokenized is just returned as a dynamic mask of pound signs in this case, which you can customize that. And then the CUV is just displayed as the token itself. So nothing fancy, but that's uh, another way, uh, another example of our product here. So supervisor, this individual, will have full access to detokenize everything. As you can tell, everything is detokenized. They can see the entire email address, the actual credit card number as well. So this concludes the generic credit card example. I'm gonna move on to the banking example, very similar, which is that be banking, banking instead. Using an email still, but in this case, I'm gonna use three different the savings account, checking account, and, and the routing number. And in this example, the, the email will be tokenized just as it was before, before the at sign. The savings account, the last six here will be tokenized, but the first four will be in the clear. The checking account will be stored with only the last four visible, and the routing number will be, will be tokenized using for, format preserved encryption, so it will remain in numeric format. And similarly, to the previous example, see that this was actually what was entered in, and this was actually what was stored in the database. So tokenized email, the savings, the first four of the, the savings account was in the clear, but the rest of it was tokenized, as you can tell the difference between those two. The checking account, it was should be the last four that were kept in the clear in the first six that or the actual token. And the routing number is just a completely different number, which is the token itself. All right, let's jump in. Let's see uh, bank user one. Let's see what they see versus the other users here. So we use we log in as the bank user one. And similar to before, everything is tokenized. Everything is, well, actually the email is tokenized here that's being shown. So this is the value that's in the database where the rest of it is just masked. Uh, instead of being shown. So the masks could also, also be replaced instead of the token values, um, and then just the last four as well, which I will show in the next user, actually. Bank user two. So bank user two, they actually are seeing the full email address tokenized value of the savings account. So just the first four are in the clear and the last six are tokenized where they're seeing the entire detokenized checking account and they are seeing the detokenized routing number. But the savings account is still in its tokenized format. And of course the email is detokenized. And then we have the, the, the bank uh, supervisor as well, now they're just going to be able to see everything there. Pretty straightforward from that perspective. 
So here we go, and everything is in the clear. It is not tokenized. Nothing is tokenized. All right, so the backend database, take a quick look. So the reg registered users, this was the credit card example. As you can tell, the email is stored in this format. The credit card number was stored in the tokenized format with the last four still there. And then, of course, the CVV is, remember, this was the tokenized value, not the actual CVV value. This is just, just showing that I'm not uh, playing any tricks here. This has actually happened as the actual database fields and how it's actually stored there. So similarly with the bank users, the email tokenized value is stored there as such. The savings account, the first four are in the clear and the rest of it is the token value. The checking, it's the, the, the first six are tokenized and the last four are in the clear. And of course the routing number is completely tokenized. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me at dean.glover at talesgroup.com. Thank you.